name is uh, Marjorie Thomas. I'm Kia Ani. My dish gives me a bush of chain. Would it eat me? Does it cheat her bond? Does she know? I was born at uh, Ganado Mission Hospital. My parents were missionaries, and uh, my mom said my dad, my dad died when I was two, and I don't remember him. Mm -hmm. uh, she owned livestock here, so that's why we, we moved up here with the livestock mm -hmm. after uh, my father died. I was mostly raised by my grandmother, and um, there are a lot of things that my grandmother taught me that I still do. Over here, you're out in the wild. You know, if I was to live here with nothing, no money, nothing, what am I going to eat? How am I going to get it? You look at all these plants. Grandma taught me, this is food. You eat this, you prepare it this way. You can go out there and get it. You don't have to have a lot of money to live a life which is true. I started school down here at uh, Chinle Boarding School. We had to live in the, uh, in the boarding school. And uh, we went home once, once a year, just when school was out. Then in fourth grade, um, my mom enrolled us at Ganado Mission. And so I went to the mission school through ninth grade. Um, that's where I met my, my husband, Leo Thomas. When he left the mission, I left to be with him too. He went to school down in Phoenix. One year he didn't come back and I really missed him. He wrote to me from Phoenix. So the next year I decided that I, was going, I wasn't going to go to school there. But my mom had us work for our tuition during the summertime. And uh, I decided that um, I was going to run away so I'd get away from the mission. I did run away. Then I told my, my mom a big lie. I told her girls were really mean. They beat me up and all that, which never happened, really. I told her I wanted to go to Phoenix Indian School. And there was enrollment going on down here at Chinle uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs. So my mom took me down there and enrolled me, and I went to Phoenix. When I got down there, you know, I, I wrote to Leo and I got a letter from him from Ganaro. Oh, I was so upset at him. I just really told him off, you know. He's the reason why I went down there. He never told me he was going back to the mission. Spring, uh, I went to work at Torlina boarding school. It's in New Mexico, uh, between Gallup and Shiprock. And uh, when I was working there in the summertime, Leo came to work there. He was going to school at Fort Lewis A&M College. And he came to work there. So we re-met. We re That's when um, he proposed to me. But he said, my wife has to be a high school graduate. Ah, oh, shoot, what does high school graduation have to do with marriage? And, well, I loved him, and I was going to marry him. So away I went back to school. I went to Farmington Public School and I graduated from um, Farmington High School. I never took 11th grade. I just had enough credits to graduate. So I graduated and as soon as I got my diploma, I just had my things all packed. I took off from the family and went to, to where um, my husband is, but he was my boyfriend then. Anyway, we got married and um, we lived in Tuba City for 30 years. And we have, um, I have four boys and two daughters and a niece that uh, we adopted, so all together seven. 
you know, I plan on having 26 of my own, <laughs> which I couldn't do. <laughs> You know, it, it uh, when I became a teacher, it wasn't just, uh, I did my student teaching, and it wasn't just having to do just that lesson, you know, and that's the way I learned. Just It can't just be just that lesson. It can't be. Somewhere it's got to come back up again. We're teaching so that that teaching can continue. I wanted to teach the children uh, it was easy for them to learn to to read and write in, in English. They could do the same thing in Navajo. So I started that in, in my classroom. And uh, we gave uh, programs, you know, for parents. And my children went and they, they did the program in Navajo. You know, and they read, they wrote, and other teachers were really interested. Parents were interested, and other students were interested. In fact, parents said, I want my child to be in Mrs. Thomas's classroom, you know. When I became a teacher, um, the principals, you know, some of them weren't good principals. I thought, gosh, I could do better than them. So I decided that if our children were going to really have a good education, that I needed to become a principal too. So uh, when I became principal then, I started the uh, Navajo language program. I wrote the program for the school district down here. I wrote it from for K through high school. And then I saw other other principals they weren't good principals. I needed to become a superintendent. Elementary, she would um, come on every morning, um, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And she would come on early in the morning, and that's the first thing we would do, is do the Pledge of Allegiance in English and in Navajo. And then she, we would follow her along in the Navajo version of it. And she would be standing in there on the television, you know, holding her chest and saying um, the whole Pledge of Allegiance. And then the one thing she would say at the end that I think everyone remembers her by is by saying that you are, you're, you are special, you're unique, and you count. And then, you know, everyone remembers that whole little quote from her, you know, it's pretty cool. My grandmother. She's the one that said, you know, uh, you, should, you should write. I wrote about my grandmother and I was reading it to her. She laughed about it and, and she said, you need to continue writing it. My grandmother told me in Navajo that um, it's good that you're writing. It's good writing that you're putting down. <laughs> You know, and, and she said, Anand, let make some more. So um, I loved my grandmother very much, and since she said that to me, I continued to write. Early in the morning, I would start walking from here. First time I walked, people would stop by. You need a ride? You need a ride? <laughs> no, leave me alone. Pretty soon, I didn't walk along the road. I walked away off from the road so nobody would stop for me. And I walked all the way down onto Chin Li. Used to meet at the high school. Uh, well, later, the first year, I just passed the high school and keep going, walking on. Way over there, and people would stop and ask me if you know I needed a ride. I said, No, I'm walking. Where are you going? Window Rock. Window Rock, all the way, and the word got around. And so, um, people joined me. People were bringing their children, dropping their children off. Oh, my, you know, how am I going to watch all these kids? I'm not babysitting. 
but I minded my own business and I was walking. There were no problems whatsoever. They ran along. They were just all. And the only thing I had to tell them is stay behind grandma. Stay behind here. Stay off the highway. See this white line? You stay on that side. Oh, I had to remind them all the way we, we walked. And then here people were meeting us with food. We had breakfast way out there and all the kids ate. I was really surprised. I was so thankful. We went way on way over uh, about the place called Snake Flat. We spent the night there. They met us with food over there again. Supper time. They cooked out there. Oh, that was great. Some of these children, their, their parents don't take them camping. They don't cook out. They might just cook out at home like this, but not way out there. And so they really enjoyed that. They were cooking their own hot dog. They were making their own fry bread. And it was great. Then we, um, we spent the night there. And the security came and checked on us. Security followed us all the way. Apache County. And we went uh, through Ganado and on up the hill that way, and we spent the night there again, up on the mountains. The next night, way further in the mountains. It was harder walking uphill. It took us longer. And um, four is a special number in Navajo. I had to make it in four days. We could have made it in maybe two and a half days, but I had to slow down and uh, make it four days. And the kids were saying, we'll be over there tomorrow. I said, no, we're not going to be over there tomorrow. You might be, but not me. I'm staying the fourth day would be in Winter Rock. So we, we slowly walked. The last day we slowly walked, we were in Winter Rock by noon. And then um, everybody disappeared and they, they asked me, are you walking back? I said, no, I'm riding home. A lot of the people know grandma and they look forward, they look forward you know, to every year, every summer, they come out, they walk maybe a mile, some of them walk all the way with her, four day, it's a four day walk with three nights camping. But I think the first time I seen her walk, walking down the highway on her own strength with her cane at her age and just dressed traditional and being with some young people walking down the highway at like full speed, that was like, Man, I need to be part of this energy, and I need to be part of what she's trying to do. A lot of young kids, teenagers, they come out and help Grandma. And it's for them, and they appreciate that. A lot of people want to see Grandma Thomas. They want to meet her, shake her hands. My, my grandmother, she was, she was always telling me, Wealth is the way you live, the way you, you conduct yourself, the way you speak, the way you look at things, your thoughts. This is all wealth. You know, that I really had to think about my grandma's thoughts. Wealth is not all just riches. It's all in you, what you produce what you get, what you bring in to your life for your children, the way you raise them, the way you talk to them. This is all wealth. That's what you're giving back to the people, to your children.